Hello everyone, I'm Michael Dana. And I'm Kristen Oaks. Thanks for joining us for this special edition of This Week in Louisiana Agriculture. It's the only TV show bringing Louisiana farmers and consumers together every week. Well, we are here broadcasting from the USDA headquarters off of Independence Avenue here in the nation's capital. This Week in Louisiana Agriculture last week followed a group of young farmers and ranchers as they met with the state's congressional delegation. And believe me, you are going to want to hear what those congressmen and senators had to say. Mike, we'll have that story in just a few minutes, but first we want to take you outside the Beltway. There are 400,000 bison in North America, that's according to the National Bison Association, and about 300 head of those animals reside about an hour and a half outside the nation's capital. Raised for their lean meat, which is also really high in protein, the bison industry is getting some attention. Twyla's Avery Davidson takes us to Culpeper, Virginia, where the buffalo really do roam. <laughs> So to get out of Washington, D.C., we had to rent a car. I asked for a Chrysler 200. This is what the rental car place gave us. That and I lost my voice in the process of arguing of trying to get a Chrysler 200, but that's okay, because it brought us to meet Rob Ferguson. He is the owner, president, all-around bison guru here at Cibola Farms. And Rob, do you think we could fit a bison in this van? I think we might. Maybe we can back this thing up to the corral and see what we can do. Well, let's go out to the corral and check it out. Okay. here in the corral where you really see how big bison get. These bulls can grow to be nearly 2,000 pounds. And unlike beef cattle, well, they're not as docile, even the cows. They're definitely wild and they're crazy. Uh, they all have horns. Um, they all know how to use them as uh, weapons. They're all very, you know, um, agile. Uh, bison can jump this fence from where I'm standing, just bloop, like a <laughs> rabbit. Big, powerful, agile, and fast. Sounds like dangerous work. We always walk around the pasture with an escape route in mind, and we never really go into the middle of a pasture because they're, they're very fast. With danger always a charge away, you might think it would be tough for Ferguson to find people to work here. Nope, he has at least 15 people on the job. It seems that danger just adds to the appeal of the job even sex appeal? Well, I mean, if you've got options of Walmart, Target, and maybe the local dairy farm, working on the buffalo farm is sexy. <laughs> and the bison have to stay sexy as well. Unlike beef cattle, there is no artificial insemination for bison. So, all 300 head Ferguson has had to be made the old-fashioned way, with these bulls put out in the pasture with the cows. Even the little bulls have a role in the breeding of bison. They're, they're there to keep, like, pressure on the big bulls like you know challenged if you're not gonna breed that cow then I'm gonna go breed that cow and so the big bull will do his job otherwise the big bulls tend to like find a girlfriend or two and then go take off and don't worry about breeding the rest of them because they can get to them later competition is the American way and what's more American than bison after all there was a time when upwards of 30 million of these animals roamed this country I really liked the idea of raising something that's native to North America and has healthful benefits and properties for cooking and food and nutrition and uh, so yeah it all just sort of came together when I finally got to the point of buying land and deciding I wanted to do some farming. That's right, food and nutrition. No one would raise this many bison just to look at them, especially when buffalo meat is leaner than white meat chicken and high in protein. The demand seems to be there too. According to the American Bison Association, in the last 20 years, the price of bison at slaughter has gone from about $1,000 per calf to nearly 3000 And if you want to try some buffalo meat, well, you can get that at Cibola Farms too. All right, Rob's brought us here to the retail market for Cibola Farms, and I see lots of cuts of buffalo here, Rob. What's your favorite, what makes a good cut of buffalo? Well, um, buffalo carcass cuts down the exact same way as a beef carcass. So you got all the same, you know, ribeye, New York strip steaks, tenderloins, it's all, it's all really great actually. But my favorite cut is the uh, flank steak, the skirt steak, and the hanger steak. It comes from the diaphragm area. It's got a lot of great flavor, a lot of great texture. Aside from selling his buffalo meat here at the farm, Ferguson also sells all year round at four DC area farmers markets. He says that's where he gets the real reward of owning a farm. Honestly, the thing that's I think the most rewarding is connecting with people because we're direct marketing all of the meat. 
So we look the customer in the face, and what we do in the field for production translates into what the customer has cooked for dinner that night, and they come back and give us feedback, they ask us questions, we have to explain how and why we're raising them the way we are, how and why uh, we do all, everything that we do. And so I find it interesting when I talk to other farmers that don't even necessarily eat their own food, let alone market their own food, that um, it's an element of farming that's sort of missing from a lot of American agriculture. And it's been quite the journey since 1999 for Ferguson. I mean, he came out here from Southern California thinking that he was going to just do business and international trade inside the Beltway, then went and took classes in Maryland about agriculture, and turns out he runs a bison ranch, and it's quite an impressive operation. I know Kristen really enjoyed going out there. It was impressive and it was really eye-opening to see growing up on an Angus ranch and a bison ranch aren't that much alike. Although you know a guy like that's got to be market savvy because you're trying to sell bison. It's not like you're trying to sell Angus. So you've really got to probably sell that a lot harder than you would a, a ribeye. So, but he, uh, he was able to sell one more thing. Kristen says that she's going to take home one of the bison skulls. So you'll see that hanging up in her office very soon, Mike. Shipping it to me next week. We're going to talk about that later. <laughs>